Who was Louis Riel? Louis Riel. He's like most famous Métis guy ever. Um, in uh, 1869, um, Canada, um, Canada tried to, uh, not tried to, Canada made a deal with the Hudson's Bay Company to, uh, to purchase uh, basically the, the Old Northwest, which was basically uh, a huge part of uh, what is now Manitoba and, and, and uh, they made that deal without talking to the First Nations or to the Métis people in Manitoba. Um, and in Red River at the time, so Red River is sort of seen as the capital of the Métis Nation, right? Uh, there, was, there was about 7,000 people there. Um, and of those 7,000 people in Red River, 6,000 of them were Métis people. Um, that was a huge Métis community, right? Um, and they, the government did not talk to them, did not consult with them. And so Louis Riel and the, the provisional government that he, is, he established in 1869, uh, they took a stand and they, they captured Fort Garry. Uh, they stood up against the Canadian government and the Canadian government recognized that what they had done was not right, that they, that they had to negotiate. Um, and they negotiated what we know now as the Manitoba Treaty, which was then codified in the Manitoba Act, right? Um, and they promised that they would give, uh, that they would re not give, I, I, don't, I don't acknowledge that they had the authority to give us anything, uh, but that they would recognize 1.4 million acres to be set aside for the children of the families that were in the Red River settlement, right? Um, and so... Uh, Canada agreed to and promised to set aside that land um, and then broke that promise, essentially. Um, only about 2% of that land ever ended up in Métis hands. The rest of it was taken uh, fraudulently. Um, and the Métis people in Manitoba ended up having to mostly move westward. A lot, some came east uh, to Ontario um, and settled among their other relatives here in Métis communities in Ontario. Uh, and a lot moved westward, right? And then Louis Riel was sent into exile, and he lived in the United States um, because of his role in leading the Red River uh, resistance. Uh, the, some people call it a rebellion. Uh, I don't agree with that term. Uh, to, to us, it is a resistance, right? Um, so 15 years later, Canada is repeating the process. Canada is going to now do to Saskatchewan what they did to Manitoba. They're just going to take it over, right? Um, and so the Métis people there, under the leadership of, of Gabriel Dumont, who was uh, uh, the, one of the finest leaders that our people have ever seen, um, they stood up and said, this is not right. But Gabriel Dumont, he was fluent in seven languages, but he couldn't read or write in English, right? And so he said, well, I can't, as a leader, I can't communicate with the government. So he went to Montana and convinced Louis Riel to come back, right? And Louis Riel went back to Saskatchewan, um, and there was the Northwest Resistance in 1885. Um, and the British sent, or Canada sent troops uh, out there, and there was, a, there was the, a series of battles leading to Batoche, um, and then uh, Louis Riel surrendered at Batoche. Um, and then he was, um, the Canadian government used an old British law from, I can't even remember what year, it was like from like the year like 12, 64, don't actually quote me on that, but it was, it was like an incredibly arcane law that was no longer in use um, to, in order to execute Louis Riel. And they executed him in, uh, on November 16th, 1885. Um, and uh, today we, we recognize him as, uh, he's recognized as the founder of the province of Manitoba. He's recognized as one of our um, incredibly influential leaders who we, um, we still draw uh, inspiration from his uh, endless determination to fight for what was right for, for his community and for our people, right?